All right, yeah, rolling right along. Page four. Oh, that was an easy one. Okay, page four was pretty simple. So you're just kind of repeating, creating some more image and text-based things. Um, so again, to create page four in a new document, I'm just going to click and drag that one there. I got a new duplicate of the previous page, and I'm going to delete those other select those elements and delete them. And again, let's look at the other example. And the picture with some framing. Uh, I think I started to add stroke and some other effects on the outline. So that was what was new in this this one. It's supposed to be an introductory page to the next section. This kind of in theory. So I initially started with a picture, placing the picture. And a picture of a flower. It doesn't have to be the same one I had from before, but let's go ahead and use that one. Okay. Close the picture. Click the new drag. We'll go ahead and move that in there. And we've got a little magenta line. There we go. Alright, so now it's in line. Alright. So, one of the things I did was add a frame around and underneath this. I'm going to go ahead and go to my rectangle tool. Draw out that rectangle. And I'm going to put it so that it's just slightly beyond that edge. Same color as the other background, so I'm going to go ahead and change it right now while it's still selected. And put something along the line of that. Ooh, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not quite so bright, but let's see. Switch that there. So notice how it went into the uh, straight. So switch that there. Yeah. And now we're going to uh, control click on it, or right click and arrange it, and send it backwards. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Unless I thought of that magenta, because I saw the magenta guideline there. Remember that, that line out here. Is just a bleed area. Um, probably won't see that beyond that area on the, on the iPad. So on this object, that rectangle I just drew, I've, you know, I've clicked away from everything. Demonstrate there it is selected. Um, looking up here, I'm talking about the fill and the stroke of an object. The stroke is the outline. So the fill is currently that magenta color. Let me go ahead and change the color of the stroke to a um, black. And then I'm going to increase the size of that stroke here just so you can start to see it. Let me take a look at it and see how that looks. Very interesting. And then uh, I'm going to do the same thing to the photo, actually. So that photo currently has no fill, because it's already a photo. It has no stroke or outline. So I'm going to go ahead and click black. And that one's really thin. So I'm going to just bump it up a bit. It's about so it's like two. There we go, you can start to see that stroke. Uh, the other thing I did to that object was add a glow this time. So if I select that purple box back there, and then right click and go to effects, powder glow, you can start to play with the glow. Currently, the preview box checked, and you could change whether it's a white glow, paper color, that's fine. You just see how that 
looks. Let's increase the pixel range there. See it's starting to get bigger. It's kind of fun. The spread looks far out. So we'll increase that. Get a more interesting noise. We'll avoid that. It just kind of makes things a little grainier on the edges. We can change the color, but I'm just going to leave it at that. So say OK. And then we did some similar things on the previous one. We have the flowers. It's always nice to kind of change things up. And that's how you learn design is by you know, starting somewhere and then modifying and changing. So you can notice I clicked in that blue box and the text cursor went up in there. So we want to start our own new text box over here. And we've been using the same font. Um, I haven't gotten too much into playing with font or explaining it to you as there are different rules for handling fonts, but um, generally a good stated rule is no more than two fonts per document, and when using two, maybe go with one serif and one sans serif font and see how they look together. Find a good, good looking matching pair. So when I made the text box and dragging it over and lining it up. And it's lining up my box. So I want to make that box a little smaller so it's closer to the text. Looking for that alignment. And there it is. Okay. Shrinking up the box. Using my arrow keys. And again, I did similar things to the font that I did to these objects. So I've given it a stroke, so I gave it the text tool, highlighting the font, going up, and I did add a, did add a stroke, and change the color of it. That matches, so sort of somewhat matches. Um, you can certainly add effects to the text by hmm, that's one of the try it when it's an object mode rather than so it's selected there we go effects out of glow just glow all the way Okay, we're looking at all my flowery here. And that was it for that page, page four. The next page is going to be a little more interesting as we create a slideshow and we'll start to get into some more of the interactivity aspects of InDesign.